Not all railway sleepers do the same job the same way. From timber to concrete, steel to plastics, each has its own strengths and weaknesses. So which is best for today's railway? It's not just a block that sits under the rail. It's the link between the steel rail and the stone that supports the track. And it can decide how the whole track performs. To understand that, it helps to understand what sleepers actually do. Sleepers sit between the rails and the ballast. They keep the track in position, they transfer loads down into the ground, and they maintain the gauge, the distance between the rails. Their job sounds simple, but every material handles that job differently, and each comes with its own trade-offs. Let's see how each material stacks up. Timber sleepers have been around since the earliest railways, and even today, you'll still find them on light-used sections of main lines, on those secondary routes, sidings and heritage lines. They've earned that long service because they're easy to work with. They're relatively light, straightforward to transport, and simple to handle. They're naturally good electrical insulators, and if you need a short fix, often for a spot of re-sleepering, timber can be drilled or re-drilled without too much effort to suit what you need. It also offers a degree of flexibility thanks to its natural elasticity of those timber fibres, which helps absorb the shocks from passing trains. But the downsides are there and they can be quite clear. Wood doesn't last forever. It's vulnerable to rot, weathering and the attack of insects. The move away from some chemical treatments, such as creosote, has shortened the service life of some sleepers, although other treatments are still available. Sourcing the hardwood best suited for sleepers has also become increasingly difficult, particularly as sustainability requirements tighten. And over time, those fastening holes that are so easy to drill can elongate, leading to gauge issues and other track irregularities. So while timber still has a place, it's showing its age. It's typically cheaper and easier to handle than a big concrete sleeper but nowhere near as strong or as long-lasting. And on strength and long-term stability, both concrete and steel can easily outperform it. Concrete has become the standard choice for most main lines. And let's be honest, it's easy to see why. It's durable, has a long life, and gives the track a solid, stable base under both high speed and high axle loads. Its weight works in its favor too, because it helps the track resist movement from both passing trains and temperature variation. Concrete sleepers are now the default across most high speed and high freight mainline routes. However, those advantages do have some clear drawbacks. Concrete sleepers can be expensive, and also they're awkward to handle, both during installation and replacement, needing mechanical assistance because of their weight. If the fastening housings are damaged, the sleeper can be repaired, but it's often best to be fully replaced. They are susceptible to cracking or edge spooling under heavy tamping or direct impact. And because they're hard and stiff, if there is any movement beneath them in the trap bed, such as a void, ballast wear can increase rapidly with the sleeper grinding away at the stone. So while they dominate modern track, concrete sleepers aren't perfect. They deliver unmatched stability and a great service life, around 50 years in mainline applications if well looked after. But at the cost of weight, difficulty in handling, and the limited adaptability compared with timber or some newer plastic options. And that brings me to this video's sponsor, Sekisui. Sekisui are the pioneers behind FFU synthetic sleepers, first developed in Japan in the 1980s and now used worldwide. In the UK, FFU has become the go-to solution for some of the most demanding applications. You'll find it in wheel timber replacements on bridges, in switch and crossing layouts, and in complex locations such as the long bearers at Newark Flat Crossing, one of the busiest and most intricate sites on the network. Over the past four decades, Sekisui's technology has moved from an innovative idea to a proven global standard. FFU is now installed in thousands of locations across the world, showing how engineered composites can deliver both performance and durability in the railway track. To learn more about Sekisui and the projects where FFU has been applied, there's a link in the description or in the top right-hand corner now. Steel sleepers had a period of increased use in the UK, particularly on secondary routes, but now they're largely found only in limited areas. However, they remain widely used across networks in the US and Australia, especially on freight and secondary lines where access 
handling and cost make them practical. They do have some solid advantages. They're lighter than concrete, making renewals and installation much easier. They're strong, long-lasting and recyclable at the end of their life. And certain designs, particularly those with spaded ends, give excellent lateral stability once packed into the ballast, using ballast pressure to help resist movement, but still has its drawbacks. Those stamped channel sections can leave sharp edges, creating a handling risk from people during those installations. Corrosion is a constant concern, especially in damp or coastal areas. Their hollow shape, while an advantage in some ways, does make tamping and packing ballast underneath the sleeper more complicated, and they provide poor electrical insulation. Even when fitted with insulated pads or inserts, these only offer a thin layer of separation compared with a full sleeper of timber or plastic. They can also transmit more vibration and noise into the track bed than timber. Steel strikes a balance between strength, weight and recyclability, but at the cost of higher maintenance needs and limited suitability across modern railway networks. The newest player on the track are plastic and composite sleepers. The industry's response to sustainability pressures and timber supply challenges. These materials resist rot, moisture and insect attack almost completely. They're excellent electrical insulators, similar to timber and far better than steel. And because they're made from recycled material, they offer a clear sustainability story. They can be molded to match the shape of traditional timber sleepers or designed into new optimized profiles that perform better under modern loads. Now different materials within plastic and composites are finding different roles, from plain line sleepers to S&C timbers to longitudinal beams on bridges. They've already proven successful on bridge decks and in tunnels across the world, replacing decayed timber and avoiding the sourcing problems of tropical hardwoods. From remote rural lines to high traffic renewals, they've turned sustainability into good performance. But like anything new, there's variations in their performance. Plastic sleepers covers everything from recycled polymer blends to fiber reinforced composites. Some recycled types have shown creep or gradual deformation or even warping when exposed to either sustained loading or heat. This is an issue that's being engineered out with higher spec composites or hybrid op. They also come with a higher upfront cost than a typical timber sleeper, even if their maintenance costs are lower over their lifetime. And while they're gaining ground, plain line use is still a lot less common than your typical concrete sleeper. When you compare them directly, it's not just about sustainability. Timber is a renewable material. Trees keep growing but it's constrained by its sourcing and treatment needs. While composites use recycled or synthetic materials, they're more energy intensive to make, but they last far longer and with lower maintenance. So while they're largely proven for many applications, they just haven't reached mass adoption just yet. So which sleeper material is best? The honest answer, there isn't one. Each has strengths that suit different parts of the network. For main lines, high speed routes and heavy freight, concrete is still the clear choice. For switches and crossings, heritage lines, lighter duty track, timber still has a place, though it is steadily declining. For secondary lines and some areas, steel can really still be a practical choice, even if its use in the UK has steeply declined. And for bridges, tunnels or sustainability driven projects, Plastics and composites are the modern alternative that's proving its worth, especially where there's sustainability targets or difficult environments rule out the use of timber. In practice, engineers choose what fits the job, not what looks best on paper. If you want to go beyond sleeper types and get really familiar with every part of the track, from clips and pads to rails and fastenings, you can download my free track component ID guide using the link below. It's a quick visual reference that breaks down every component, how it fits together and what it's for. Perfect for apprentices, graduates or anyone learning how railway tracks work in practice. Grab your copy from the link in the description before you go. It's completely free and will help you on your railway engineering journey. Each sleeper material tells a chapter of the railway's story. From the timber that built it initially to the concrete that brought it to where it is today and the composites that could define its future. Not all sleepers do the same job the same way, but together they've kept the railway moving for over 200 years. If you were designing a railway today, balancing performance, cost and sustainability, which sleeper type would you choose and why? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.